They say they are South Africa's elite cops. Young, educated, keen to stamp out crime. Our own FBI. A special unit to monitor, search out and bust criminals, all in one. But are they worth the hype? Do they live up to their reputation? I think we're doing well under circumstances. I think we're probably worth 75% of our, of our share price. It's mid-morning and this Scorpions team is off to court, with the judge waiting especially for them. They have to get search warrants signed, in preparation for a sting on a criminal syndicate tomorrow. This warrant will authorize us to actually conduct a search on the premises and uh, to the extent of arrest as well. And we will be able to um, seize evidence that would be necessary to prove the commission of this offense. The Scorpions have the legal powers to investigate and prosecute their cases. When you have a policeman investigating on his own and you have a prosecutor separate in court, there's no clear lines of accountability in terms of when the document is handed over, who's now responsible for it. If there's an acquittal at the end, what is the, pros the prosecutor could blame the policeman and say there was a bad investigation and vice versa. The policeman or the investigator blames the prosecution saying that the case wasn't prosecuted properly. With this Troika principle of the Scorpions, that can't happen because they work together from the outset. But things don't always go as planned. The sting wants to happen tomorrow. Now they've just learned that a member of the syndicate has been arrested trying to leave the country. They must think quickly. Hi, Robin. Um, did you get any um, feedback from Interpol? They have to rush to the airport to make sure their suspect is debriefed and doesn't alert any other members of the syndicate. Months of surveillance have borne fruit in hard currency. The suspect is part of a cross-border money laundering racket called Hawala. Its foot soldiers and masterminds are Pakistani nationals living in South Africa. At last, the Scorpions have a breakthrough. The Scorpions' big shots arrive. An impromptu press conference is arranged. The amount of money that was found is about 245,000 US dollars. It was sealed in this container, wrapped uh, in the counter foil, so that it should not be detected by, by our cameras. This, as you can see, this is, this is the counter foil that was used, and this is the pot. Uh, I'm very pleased with this, with this development, and uh, because it shows that our people are on the alert. Back at headquarters, the team has arranged for backup to pounce on the other members of the syndicate. Time is everything. The arrest at the airport may have already alerted them. Sometimes it's too late. The others have already gone or haven't come home. But the Scorpions investigators have what they want most, a paper trail to lead them to others. The Scorpions mostly investigate organized crime, especially financial crimes. What were you doing in the The easy police say some. No jumping over fences, only sifting through papers. That's a very well-defined basket of work, okay? It's a niche. And then we said, if we do that, we will consider three factors before we take in matters. One is public interest. Two is degree of complexity and the level of premeditation and syndicate involvement. And three is financial work. Then there's the turf war. They also do work done by other agencies like the Revenue Service, Home Affairs and the police. It's not always a friendly arrangement. Sometimes they do come across perhaps as a bit, maybe a bit aggressive in their approach towards their investigation. And um, I think it is important for the Scorpions to display a, re a proper respect for the other law enforcement agencies. Oh, it's bluster. It's bluster and, 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 and maliciousness by some people. Our people are very proud. We taught them to be proud. Or arrogant. Which one? Arrogance is not a bad idea as long as you can justify it, as long as it doesn't make people sick. Uh, 
but I, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to describe the organization as one as an arrogant one. I'd rather describe it as a proud one. We are encouraging our people not to blink, to keep their, their heads up and, 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 and their chins up. Or is it chins down? The Scorpion's corruption probe into Deputy President Jacob Zuma has earned them the wrath of some powerful critics. Their very role as crime fighters and their tactics have been questioned. And 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 and, and they'll never be corrupt. Never. These powerful critics want heads to roll. In the firing line is Bulalani Ruka. The scorpions fall under him. I think the fact that the that all these questions are being raised about the scorpions unit at this time, you know, the allegations about their Hollywood style tactics and all of these issues that have come up in the media recently, um, seems to send out the message that the scorpions are trying to be silenced. Seems to send out the message that um, that that government is being stung by its own its own creation. Special and adequately staffed and equipped investigation unit. It was an act of parliament in 1999 that gave birth to the Scorpions as a specialized unit. The Scorpions are closely styled along the lines of the FBI, who trained them. They play up the image of a specialized corps. Then there's the media image. The whole hype and image around the Scorpions came at a perfect time. You know, the black GPRs, the red badge, the whole image that goes with the Scorpions unit as being the elite crime fighting unit, and even their, 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 their motto, you know, feared by criminals, loved by, loved by the people, um, was very successful. I think that's the main, one of the main reasons why the Scorpion in the public perception um, got such incredibly high ratings. Here, the new South Africa in its ongoing transformation. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear to perform your function as an employee of the Directorate of Special Operations to the best of your ability? Scorpion graduates, it is without doubt that the inception of each one of us on the 14th of April, 2002, to direct We will set them out in every nook and cranny. We'll find them. We want to make sure that if there are communities or people out there who believe that in this country there are untouchables, we shall touch them. The first vehicle will be myself and soon. Second vehicle will be AK and his navigator keys. Yeah, we can move. The unit's special operations staff stake out the premises of a suspect, then the investigators move in. surveillance you 90 percent you, you, you won't convict uh, uh, the people you are investigating so you will not have a successful prosecution therefore surveillance in this division it, it, it's of uh, crucial importance the day before a sting the team meet to plan strategy but this seldom involves a safety threat. The crimes they investigate, critics say, are soft police work. Okay, just got a call. Um, okay. I have you in, we are four, we are fine. We have come to the conclusion that the crime types that, that, that impact on our economy and our democracy, more than anything else, although they're not always that visible because they are committed in a rather insidious way in boardrooms, is financial crime. And we've taken a considered decision that that should be one of our focus areas. 
As one team is preparing for the sting, another is following up on yesterday's arrest. This means taking a statement from and interrogating the suspect. These investigators are accompanied by a special support officer in case of trouble. We also, as a strategic objective, try to disrupt crime. If you can't prove murder, go for tax, you know. Um, or sometimes just make criminals aware that you're watching them and that you, you are concentrating on their activities and you divert their energies and, and their focus and their organization. You disrupt what they do. It goes back to uh, Sidney Marshall here. When Nadir Ahmed uh, went to the Belgian consulate, saying... The special operations team is trained to step in if there's danger during stings. They seldom used, but need to be up to speed just in case. They, like the rest of the Scorpions, fall under the National Prosecuting Authority. This includes units like asset forfeiture, witness protection and sexual offences, all of which used to fall under the police. The special operations section is off limits to nearly everyone else in the building. They wouldn't allow special assignment to take pictures of the nerve centre which includes special holding cells for suspects. The Scorpions follow cases through to prosecution. Because of this, their lifeblood is having the necessary documents. This is one of the most tightly controlled and restricted parts of the building. The document centre is a relatively new environment. It was created because everybody used to keep their papers in the offices and things used to go missing and got lost. And so the reason for it is to make sure that it's secure and that we have control of all the papers that come in and leave the environment. Having them under the same roof, being able to work together from the outset of the case, um, is really taking this concept that everyone's referring to of prosecution-led investigation um, to its ultimate conclusion. Karen Pillay is a former cop turned scorpion. She's also a wife and mother of two young children. They have to live with her going out to work at 3 a.m. in the morning. Well, actually, I was um, employed by the South African Police Service for the past 12 years. And um, I needed something more challenging in my life. And I am really challenged by organized crime. So I had to make a choice of a career by then. And um, I thought, yeah, if I was going to, you know, specialize in organized crime, the ideal field for me would be the scorpions. I worry a lot um, considering uh, the kinds of investigations that we do, especially the fact that we're dealing with organized syndicates and, you know, security becomes a priority issue in terms of your safety, your surrounding, you know, where you socialize, with whom you socialize, and, and basic things like that. And, um, yeah, I just look like, you know, worry a little sometimes about my family. Try not to tell anyone where I work. It's best left unsaid sometimes. The follow-up raid on the Pakistani syndicate yields no arrests, but more documents. With the evidence bagged, it's off to give operational support to another team hitting different premises at the same time. Thank you. 
or that I asked you. This travel agency is being raided. It's suspected they're involved in a fake passport syndicate. These documents may lead them to the leaders. It's taking quite long, it's standard, it's going to take some time still. We only halfway through downstairs and that's the up and do the whole um, upstairs, so uh, it's going to take some time. We yeah, are going to be here probably till late in the afternoon. Another morning, another raid and more news exposure. This time they're after the kingpin of a false investment company. Just by way of figures, you, you're looking at about 653 major cases that have been disposed of. Uh, of the 380 to 400 prosecutions, you have a conviction rate of 93.1%. We tabled this in Parliament recently. Um, I think the asset forfeiture under restrained value currently is 181 million, of which 37 to 40 million is already in the Criminal Asset Recovery Fund, intended to be used to strengthen the criminal justice system, to, um, you know, to upgrade the facilities of South African police, security at the courts, etc. So the idea is to take money out of crime and plow it back into improving the capacity of those fighting crime. I think it's a very noble For idea. Joe Soap, who just wants to know and, and tends to gauge things pretty simplistically, wants to know how many people have you put in jail? Yeah. Well, just talk that. Well, I, Sadija, it's an interesting question because it was put to us recently by the minister and we've been looking at that in the DSO. The figure is about 500 people and the sentences range from 5, 10 years upwards to life imprisonment. These are major, major criminal uh, uh, criminals. It's not the, 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 the average uh, shoplifter. I think important, you must take into account what that means in a province like the Western Cape where they forget about who's taking credit for what. The end result is the prosecution of those cases. DSO prosecutors have prosecuted those cases and 47 people who have been responsible for the violence, the urban terror in the Western Cape, are in jail today as a result of the work of the people in the Western Cape. Okay. Now, because of the work of the Scorpions, we've had an outflow of more than 100 uh, people of East, Asian oriental origin, if we could find it like that, who we regard as crooks, who left South Africa. Again, the, the, the Khadebe case to us was a big one. The appellate division confirmed our position on appeal, and confirmed the sentence. And I think it sends out a message to those people who use these fly-by-night scans to, to, in my view, steal the money of naive and gullible people. So the idea that we just sit here <laughs> and take cases and pick from what's on the market today and the mood that we got out, out of bed with this morning is completely unfounded. But their record isn't unblemished. The Scorpions take credit for stopping the political violence in KwaZulu-Natal in the late 1990s. But critics say they undermined police work in the area. In one case, the Ndabezita massacre, they didn't act on information given to them until they saw it in the papers. They later came under heavy fire for forcing a journalist to testify in the trial. Then a spectacular blunder. In 2000, Samuel Musa Biamane, wanted by the United Nations for genocide, was arrested by the Scorpions. When they failed to tell Home Affairs who the man was, he was deported by mistake. The investigators were here at my invitation. I had invited them to come to the country. And they were here and expecting us to deliver the person to them. And the person was gone. And who polices the scorpions? 
A question asked earlier this year when a suspect fell out of a sixth floor window in a Durban office. Yeah, unlike the South African Police Service that has the ICD as a, a form of oversight, um, there has been criticism raised or concern raised that the National Prosecuting Authority, more particularly the Scorpions with their investigators, do not have any formal body um, of oversight, any formal oversight body. But conflict with the work of the police is by far the biggest concern. Recently, two investigating arms of the same government showed up to flex their muscles in the same case. This involved new National Party officials David Malazzi and Peter Mare. There is no serious threat to disband the Scorpions, but people, important people, are talking about whether they are not doing the same job as the police. Since 94, I mean, I've seen cases uh, done by the Scorpions, and I've, I've been puzzled why the Scorpions were ever involved. The cases that seemed to me were really rather ordinary and, and really should have been handled by the police. Um, so I'm saying that that's tension. We have to deal with it at some point. The Scorpions were created by an act of Parliament, and only Parliament can change the way they work. Same people who d <laughs> debated created and institutionalized the Scorpions, uh, or the same institutions, are now having a rethink two and a half years later. Uh, of course, one's entitled to revisit things, if it doesn't work. For investigators like Karen Pillay, all the talk of changing the law is of little concern. It's back to the office at the end of another long, hard day, to take stock of what happened and plan for tomorrow. This type of police work is easier physically, but has its own demands. I must say, in the police, yes, you had to do a lot of running around. It was a pick-up-and-go kind of situation, working long hours. Um, here with the Scorpions, it's a much more um, systematic approach to investigation. A, lots of, um, a lot of planning goes into your investigation. And yes, when you do have to run after the criminals, there's not much running to do. I think every day one does not know what to expect, but um, I prepare myself for it, especially spiritually. I believe if I've got God with me, then all things are possible through Him. Oh, but um, it does take a certain amount of um, better judgment for myself when I do go into a situation. Yes, and um, one's discretion um, is very important, you know. There must always be a balance between what you do and what you think. Given what we've achieved, and given what we've done, and given the sort of um, public profile we have and, and, and the public trust, uh, that the scorpions are yet to stay. <laughs>